All right, next up we have Claire Seimer from Live Well Colorado, a nonprofit working to promote healthy nutrition across the state. Let's give a warm welcome to Claire. Hi everyone, my name is Claire Seamer. I am in from Denver and I work for an organization called Live Well Colorado. Live Well is a nonprofit statewide policy and advocacy organization working to impact healthy eating and active living. That's what I was supposed to say at that slide. <laughs> so I started with Live Well Colorado in 2015. I was originally hired on as office manager and my role quickly elevated to take on more responsibility around data management and evaluation given my previous professional experience. It was really in that role of office manager that I started seeing how our team was working together and started identifying inefficiencies and thinking, what can we do to make this better? I'm truly a problem solver at heart and it was seeing everyone work together that I started seeing this. I'll give you one example. We would have our team, we, eh. a team member would go out into the community, work with a partner, and the partner would bring up this other live well work that was also going on in their county or city. The partner, our team member didn't know really what they were talking about. There wasn't communication between our programs, especially with our consultants that we were working with as well. So I'll take a step back and talk a little bit about Livewell, Colorado. We, as I said, we're a statewide policy and advocacy organization, and we also have three flagship programs that support and create partnerships to work on that, those policy issues. It was, our first program was the School Food Initiative, which works with school districts to convert their school meal program to move from processed and heat and serve meals to scratch made food pr uh, promoting fresh produce. We have our Heal Cities and Towns campaign, which works with municipalities to pass resolutions with a commitment to healthy eating and active living. And then our most recent program is our Double Up Food Bucks program, which is a USDA pilot program, which provides a $20 incentive to SNAP or food stamp participants to purchase Colorado-grown fruits and vegetables at participating Double Up sites, most of which are farmers markets, but we have some others as well. But these programs weren't talking to each other. There wasn't cohesion among them. Um, so I really started thinking, what, what tools do we need? What can we do to make, this, make our team work better together? And I decided we needed a central data hub. I didn't know exactly what that was gonna be. In my mind, I was gonna build this access database all by myself. We had so many partners across the state. We work with municipalities, school districts, corporations, statewide and national policy advo or advocacy organizations, um, farms, vendors, farmers markets. Um, I can keep going on, but I'll spare you. We, and then we were working in silos because not only were our partners not talking to each other, school districts don't always talk to the municipal leaders that they're in um, the same region as sometimes because those school districts, their um, district lines overlap cities and even counties sometimes. So that communication wasn't between our partners, so it needed to be between us. And then in 2017, we had a mission shift. Our organization went from focusing on individual behavior change to really addressing systems change and removing barriers for those most impacted around the food system and active transportation. With that shift in mission, we realized we needed to shift our evaluation and really figure out what Livewell's contribution was to um, those larger systems change, which can be extremely messy and difficult to figure out what's going on there, what are we doing? So I was gonna build an access database, but I knew that that wasn't gonna work for, with our team. Um, it wasn't gonna be user friendly, I needed it something else. So one of our partners actually recommended Kintone with us, or Kintone to me. I started looking into it, I'm like, this is perfect. Like, it's user friendly, our team can use it. And we started building a database together. We had a really inclusive planning process where I met with each of our departments separately, really asking them, what do you need to do your work better? What do you wanna learn from your work? Based on that feedback, I started designing a database. 
I trained our team in how to enter it and started defining rules for entry so that we were getting the best information out. We are constantly refining that tool. The one thing I always told our team is that, you know, this is customizable. If something's not working, tell me and we can fix it. Like with any other database platform, that probably wouldn't be as possible just to say, let's fix this, let's change this field. And so we're constantly refining it. I plan to return back to our teams and making sure that the information we're getting out is valuable to us and that we're learning from it. And so it'll be a continuing cycle. So Kintone obviously has a lot of templates that you can use, but I knew, some, I knew we need something really specialized because our work is a little different and we wanted something that was gonna be of value to us. So I built two relational databases from scratch. It was really to address our immediate needs, but I know that our possibilities with Kintone are endless and I'm excited to see what happens next. The first tool is the partnership engagement tool, which really captures our work across the state and how we're engaging with our partners and it helps, the goal is to really decrease those silos that, so that we have a central database that we can, that our team can go to, learn from and know what other work is going on in our programs. And then after that, I started getting all these questions from our team, can Kintone do this, can ten, Kintone do this? And so we built the Double Up Food Bucks database, which was a response to an overabundance of evaluation data that we needed to start honing in and getting a better understanding of. So I'll start with the partnership engagement tool. It all, right now it has approximately 450 partners entered into it and just over 700 engagements. We're not even close to being finished. An example of what that would look like is let's say we have a municipality in a Denver suburb that is a member of our Heal Cities and Towns campaign and is also, uh, a, runs a farmer's market that's a double up site and they manage that. So those would be two separate engagements that are associated with that partner. If two of the employees of that municipality attend our Heal Summit in November, that attendance would be a third engagement, but those municipal employees would also be entered into the database. We wanna track individuals, we wanna know who specifically we're working with, but employees change, and so we wanted something that better captured our relationship with the larger partner, not just those individuals. If also in that municipality there is a school district that is working on safe routes to school, let's say, and they're working closely with the city, then we would identify a connection between those two partners in the database. We really wanna start getting at that social connectivity between our partners, and um, by entering all of our partners together, we're actually able to start seeing some partnerships and connections that our partners on the ground don't know about yet because we're seeing a larger picture than they are. So that's pretty exciting. This is one small snippet of a chart that we're able to get from our partnership engagement tool. It's an overlap of our three flagship programs by city. It seems incredibly elementary, I know. <laughs> like, but it is amazing that we were not able to see or visualize this information before. Someone would have to go to two or three people, get updated lists of our participants, and then none of our team has, or not none, but <laughs> someone would have to go into Excel, which no one was really willing to do, and figure out where that overlap is or an email would go out about one specific city saying who are our partners in this area and they'd do it through email. And so for us to be able to start seeing our overlap by our programs, we're not only breaking down those silos, but we're now able to identify opportunities and gaps in communities and build better valuable communities and be of service to our partners. So the Double Up Food Bucks database came about because we have a robust evaluation for this. We're getting information in through financial reports, interviews, surveys of not only customers, but vendors and market managers as well. The evaluation, is, or the program's now in its third year. We had over 100 Double Up sites in this past year. And the evaluation was really at a statewide level for our funders. We looked at our overall impact, but we knew that every community is different. They face different barriers. 
how they implement the program in, at each site is going to be different. And so we really needed to start breaking down and seeing what was happening at the regional level. By entering all of our evaluation data into a new database, we are now able to run regional reports. We're able to provide better customized technical assistance, and it's a tool for our new program, which is the Community Food Advocates, which sends advocates out into specific communities to connect SNAP customers to the markets with the assistance of regional partners. It was by using these partners, we, or by providing this information to our advocates, they're able to provide better services um, to our partners and really know how the program's being implemented on the ground. We're also able to use these regional reports for local fundraising. There are community foundations and banks that want to support incentive dollars specifically in their community, and by running regional reports, we're able to help them. And the next step is going to be to compare that data to secondary population data to really see where the gaps are and making sure we are supporting communities that are facing the greatest barriers for healthy eating and active living. Uh, our database is also able to help us be more responsible evaluators. This is a chart comparing double up sites in each county with uh, the number of customer surveys we're hearing back from. We really care about our customer feedback. We know that each community is different and we wanna know how it's being implemented in that area. So you can see on the far left, we have counties that have a couple, we have an over-representation of the feedback we're getting from them, while on the right, we have certain counties that weren't, we don't know really what's going on and how our customers are reacting to the program. This is a tool that our advocates can use as well to go into these communities and really figure out what the barriers are. We don't wanna just assume that they're not, that our market managers just aren't collecting. Our market managers may be stretched thin. They may not like, have printing services available that they're able to print the surveys. If we can really ask those questions and get to the uh, bottom of what's going on in those communities, we can help them and help them implement their program. So now Kintone is Laval Central Data Hub and it's only the beginning. Not only are we able to provide better technical assistance, we're better understanding our regional contribution, we're using it for our evaluation, and most importantly, we're decreasing those silos and our team is communicating better. Where we also have more efficient reporting because our grants manager can go straight into the database rather than going to one of our program directors to get information every time a grant report is due, and we're gonna start comparing that population level data to figure out where our gaps are further. Um, I'm really proud of the work that I've been able to do at LiveWell at such a small organization, and I'm happy that they've given me the opportunity to do so, and I just can't wait to see what happens next. <laughs> and I was supposed to have time for questions, but I ran a little long, so I think we're up, but feel free to come and talk to me afterwards. Thank you. <laughs>